<laughs> okay, in this topic, we're going to take some of you to your dark place for business studies. We're going to try and challenge you to understand a concept known as the price elasticity of demand. Now, hopefully we're already aware of what correlation is. Correlation is trying to ascertain links between two different factors. And one factor that businesses are really keen to try and understand is that of demand. What factors influence the demand for their products? And one thing that obviously is gonna have some kind of impact on demand for your products is the price that you charge. But this works differently for different businesses, different brands, and different products. And marketing managers are really keen to understand the relationship that exists for their products in their portfolio between price and demand. So this is a concept that's absolutely key to us as students because it allows us to offer advice in business studies exams about what marketing managers might want to think about doing with the prices of different brands in their portfolios. So let's kick this off. Managers might find that they have two different types of products in their portfolio when it comes down to their elasticity. So here's the, uh, here's the scenario. Let's imagine we've got a portfolio of products that we're in charge of managing and we're thinking about doing some price increases. Now, if we increase the price of one of our products, it's only to be expected that we're gonna lose some customers. Whenever you put the price up of a product, it's likely that you will alienate some customers. You'll price some out of the market. But how many? Sometimes when you increase the price of a product, the demand for that product is so price sensitive, price is so important to consumers, that if you put the price up even a little bit, you will price out a large proportion of your customer base. But for other products, if you increase the price of it, it'll be expected that you may lose a few customers, but most will go with you with that price increase. So as you put your prices up, you'll lose a few of your clients, but not a great many. And so what we're doing there is we're essentially looking at the elasticity of our good. So here's how it works. If a business was considering putting the price up of its products, and let's imagine we decide to go with a 5% price increase of our product. So we've got something that we've got on sale there, and we're gonna put the price up by just 5%. For some of our products, consumers would react quite drastically to that. They'd see that 5% price increase as something that they can't go with, they can't sustain, and they will switch their consumer buying patterns and not buy our products any longer. Now, if our product is what we call price elastic, it means that the percentage that demand is going to drop by is going to be even greater than the percentage we put our prices up by. So for an elastic good, if we put the price up by, say for example, 5%, it means demand would drop by an even greater proportion. Let's imagine it was 20%. So you can see here, we've got a price elastic product. We've increased the price of it by say 5%. And if demand drops by any more than 5%, be it six, be it 10, be it 15, or in this example, be it 20%, the managers know that what they've got on their hands is what's known as an elastic product. Now, not all products are like that. Imagine we put the price up by just 5%. And we lost some customers, but the percentage of customers that we lost was lower than the percentage we've put our prices up by. Look at this example here. We're putting our prices up by 5% and we do lose some customers. Demand does drop, but we only lose 2% of our customer base. So we've got ourselves two different types of products there. Elastic ones are very sensitive to price changes inelastic ones are less sensitive to price changes. Now, if you're a marketing manager, this information is key to you. Because if you identify products in your portfolio that are what we call elastic products, then you know that putting your prices up 
would not be in that product's best interests. Because although you'll make more revenue per sale charging this higher price, you're going to lose so many of your customers that your total revenue is going to plummet. But if you identify that you've got an inelastic good as part of your product portfolio, then if you put your prices up, although you know you're going to lose some of your customers, the fact that you're now charging more per product means that again, you'll make to more total revenue overall. So we've got those two types of goods, elastic and inelastic goods. Now, interestingly, the pattern of demand reverses when we talk about reducing prices. Because remember, putting up prices is not a marketing manager's only tool, not their only strategy. Quite commonly, businesses are thinking about dropping their prices as well. And we can have a look what happens to our two types of goods, elastic and inelastic, if we drop our prices. So with the elastic goods, if we drop our prices, these products are so sensitive to changes in price that just a small decrease in the sales price of our product will be met by a proportionately even greater increase in demand. So for example, if we dropped our prices by 5%, for an elastic good, demand would go up by even more than 5%. Could be six, could be 10, could be 15. In this example, it is 20. So we drop our prices by 5% and we're met by an increase in demand of 20%. Now that is advantageous to the business because we've dropped our prices by 5%. We're making less revenue per sale, but we've attracted so much additional demand that our total revenue will be more than enough to compensate for the fact we're now charging less per product. For the inelastic goods, the price drops don't work out quite so well. So if we have an inelastic good in our portfolio, we drop the price by just 5% and demand may go up, but not by as much as 5%. So demand may only go up 1%. It may only go up 4.9%. What makes a good inelastic is that when the price is lowered, the increase in demand is less as a percentage than the change in price. So in this example, we're putting prices down and that does attract some extra clients to our organization, but only 2% extra. So the fact that we are now making less revenue per sale is outweighing the fact that we've attracted a very small additional percentage of customers to our organization. So marketing managers are really keen to know what have they got in their portfolio? Are they elastic goods? Are they inelastic goods? Elastic goods don't react very well in terms of the revenue they make when we put the prices up. Demand plummets. But when we put the prices down, the acceleration in demand can be quite staggering. So with elastic goods, price drops work out pretty well. Price rises, not so good. If we've got inelastic goods in our portfolio, it's the opposite relationship. As we put our prices up, we lose a few customers but not very many. As we put our prices down, we gain a few customers, but not very many. So it allows managers to help them manage their pricing strategies and what changes they might make to their price. Now, for our exams, we're gonna to have to be able to recognize when a good is elastic or inelastic. And the cunning little way that we do that is to have a look at what is known as their elasticity. So whenever we have business case studies, if we see that it mentions the elasticity of a product and that elasticity starts with a minus and then a positive number. So it could be minus one, could be minus two, could be as high as minus three, and it could be a decimal. So it could be minus 1.1, could be minus 1.5, could be minus 2.2. The fact that it starts with a whole number, minus one, minus two, minus three, indicates to us we have an elastic good on our hands here, which is great for price reductions, not working so well when its price increases. If the elasticity of a good that's mentioned in a case study starts with minus zero, so it could be as high as minus 0 0.9, could be as low as minus 0 0.1. If it starts with minus a zero, then it indicates to us we've got an inelastic good on our hands, which means that it works out fairly well when we're increasing prices and can damage total revenue when we are reducing prices. 
it is a tough topic. Maybe that we need to watch this video more than once to understand it. We'll put a link in the top hand corner to other marketing videos that might support us when we're talking about price and pricing strategies. It's one that's worth getting your head around because if it comes up in the exam, not all students will be able to answer it. So if we can tackle it, it's gonna put us in the contention for those higher grades. If you've got any questions about elasticities, which you may well have, other marketing topics or any aspect of the business syllabus, downstairs in the comments section is the place to head. Otherwise, we will see you soon for another Taking the Biz tutorial.